why is this not working? Y'all know a light cut me, y'all. Y'all already know. I can't never be on here and be great. <laughs> South Keys, explain what you were saying. Cause they I could have swore at the end it was saying um somebody talking about you was talking about for men. You talking about weed for women, right? And you said you was dating a woman. Tell bro Egyptians wore wig. Well, we know that. Women, we understand the dynamics of wigs, braids, weaves, all of that. Men, you have to be in a space where if you know that you do not like women who wear weave, or that's something that bothers you, date someone who don't. It's a lot of women who don't even wear that. There's a lot of women. Okay, see? See, Steph? You got us thinking, unless you was talking about somebody else. He said... He, it was a woman. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Y'all know they like to kick me off. I'll be on here. Y'all know I'll be on here. And then it'll be counting me down. Steph, what did you say at the end of the last video? You said, who talking about me? You were talking about soft keys or you were talking about somebody else? Peace. We ain't talking about you. See, Steph bald. Steph bald. And I would add race was not the issue. Okay. I don't know what that meant. But you sound bald too and now you wear your wigs. Racist. Peace. Peace, beloved. I think it's a preference. The one thing y'all got to understand, men, y'all got to understand with women, it's a preference. This is a part of our adornment. So if we feel like we are, um, one, it's more convenient for our hair to be braided or to be in weave or whatever. Two, if we feel more comfortable because that's what we like. We don't want to take time to get our hair done like that. It's real easy for us to go and sit there and get that sew in. Well, there's so many different dynamics now. But that's why I'm like, if that is what you don't like and you don't like a woman who wear that, if that's the only thing, then don't date that kind. She had braids. Yeah, be okay. No, because people have been wearing wigs, especially in the African culture on um, Pride. They've been wearing wigs since the days of Egypt. So it ain't a trend. We've been women been wearing wigs since damn the age of Cleopatra. Wigs, um, I remember I had to get on a brother. They was asking about my nails ain't as pointy now, but they were asking about the stiletto nails and was saying something about uh witchcraft, which that's a whole nother conversation. But I had to go back and show them where we were wearing stiletto nails in Africa. That started in Africa. That ain't no new shit. This that's old. Started dating him. I was wearing weave. He says, I care enough. Y'all would stop wearing it. Hmm. I'm not going to comment on that one. Y'all know how I feel about that. Peace, peace, peace. Oh, we don't go to the barbershop and tell them how to cut their hair. You right. No, but I was saying, we don't go to the barbershop and tell them how to cut their hair. But I do feel like, you know, those, that superficial stuff, Honestly, you need to leave, leave it on that level. We still discussing superficial stuff. That means you with somebody that you don't want to be with. Yeah, but if you're saying you know where proud, if you're saying you know where they they stem from, then you should understand that women are not wearing weave because it's a trend. Shoot, there is, it's a lot of different dynamics. Like I said, I'm an all natural girl, bohemian chick, whatever. But you catch me on the right day if I want to wear. A weave, I can't do it now because I got locks. But if I want to wear my hair a certain dynamic and the only way I can achieve that style is because of, it's way before the 18th century. But if the only way that I can wear that style is to get a weave, that's what I'm going to do. 
I'm a trendsetter. I'm an influencer. I'm a goddess that come in a whole bunch of archetypes. A whole lot. <laughs> so women do wear it for a bunch of different reasons, but it's on them. Y'all have to get uh that's dealing from the white man though. Black African women research wigs in African in Africa since we were the originators. Research that. We wore wigs in Africa before that time frame. Way before the 18th century. Way before it. Um, that's when they started. That's when they accepted it into their culture. They ain't got nothing to do with us. Yes, yeah, braided bad. Oh, see, I ain't know. See, you put me on something. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do now. I got my locks. So I feel like it is it's a it's a preference. We done got all off the top of we talking about here. Soft, you ain't gonna come on here disrupting <laughs> the energy of what we talking about. We talking about soulmates, we talking about uh twin flames. If they your twin flame and they yo yo uh what you call it, right, <laughs> exactly, Alicia. Uh right. <laughs> It, we talking about soulmates and twin flames and the people that we're supposed to be with. Those people are going to be who are in alignment with who you are, with your purpose. I say, y'all, no, don't let them get y'all distracted, women. We ain't talking about that no more. Let that hair topic go. We already know. We can pull out a whole bunch of daggone books on that because we've been having to defend that for years. For years. Don't even let them get you distracted. Let's get back on point. <laughs> Let's get back on point. Let's get back to the point. Pride, you can keep your information. I don't want to know nothing about it. I, I work in the hair industry. I don't need to know nothing about it. <laughs> Let's get back to the real conversation. The real conversation is about, hey... What are you doing to make sure that you are always operating in your highest self in order to gravitate and attract that person who is for you? You know what I'm saying? How are you attracting the person that is for you? If we are truly walking in and acknowledging our energy, acknowledging who we are, doing all the things that are making us be, you know, greatness, that are making us do all the things from a, a greater aspect, a stronger aspect. Then guess what? That's going to gravitate exactly who you, you need. You attract the needy women because you are maybe putting out the energy of wanting to nurture someone. You putting out, you know, you attract the needy women, but you probably also are attracting the other women, but you're overlooking the other women. Yes, and because you needy. <laughs> Don't do that stuff. I was trying to give him a, the benefit of the doubt. There's something that is that you're needing. So you're attracting that too. You always got to be pay attention to uh, what it is, what energy you put now. What are you representing? What are you doing? How are you doing it? Because when you are in a certain dynamic, when you are in a certain energy, you see what I'm saying? Then that's what you're going to get. It don't have to be. And if he is high maintenance, then you should attract someone who is your equal for that. If you got high standards, then stick to it and wait for the girl that's going to come in your life and, and, and match that. Quit feeling like you got to get into situations with people who not even on your level, Keys. For real, for real. When people enter your life to cross your path because they may need a lesson from you. No, don't even accept that BS, Ariana. Quit feeling like y'all got to be the one to teach somebody a lesson. That ain't your job. 
When did you think that was your job? When? You ain't got... That person is in your life and they, yeah, they're here to teach you a lesson. The lesson is, are you strong enough to say, no, this person don't need to be in my life because they're full of that BS? Or are you going to go along with it <laughs> so you can be, you know, part of that, 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 that roller coaster? Stop feeling like y'all got to entertain people who not on your level. It's simple. For real, if you feel like you for real have done the work and you are walking in the energy that you are, you supposed to be walking in, that you truly are walking in, quit feeling like y'all got a dad going, raise somebody else's child. You don't. I ain't even talking about negative people. I'm talking about anybody. They can, we justify people's characteristics and feel like they are a certain type of person. We romanticize other people. If they are not feeding you life, Period. They not feeding you life. They not for you. You don't have to entertain it. You don't have to deal with stuff that you don't want to deal with. You don't. There is no rule book. It is not written in the book. When you decide you want to deal with stuff on any level, when you decide you want to entertain things on any level, Peace, 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 peace. All the people that just came in. Right. Why are you educating and why are you feeling like I got to teach somebody a lesson? I can teach them from a distance. I'm going to teach you from here. I might send you a book. You shouldn't be feeling drained. You should be feeling like you empowered. You should feel like you empowered. You should feel like you at the top of your, your game, whatever that is. You shouldn't be dealing with people that is going to uh, question, make you question. Let me say that. I ain't teaching nobody no damn lessons. Y'all, the lessons y'all getting is like right here on this live, unless you come to one of my classes. You're going to get a lesson in there. But as far as my personal life, the guards is at the gate. Guards is at the gate. Listen, when I say it, I would say end it with, how do you deal with someone that you're trying to end it with and they email you after block the number? Delete the email, block the email. If you know that that person ain't... ain't um, it don't sound like nothing. Disconnect yourself emotionally. Dr block it. Don't entertain it. Why are you still entertaining it? It's simple. A hard time leaving people behind. I feel compelled to share wisdom. Yeah, sharing wisdom is fine. You can share wisdom. As long as it's not affecting your peace and happiness. Don't feel like you have to feel obligated to, you know, entertain the people that are not on your level. The people that are gravitating to your level are going to um, come. They're going to naturally come up. They're going to naturally, you're going to see them growing. You're not going to see conflict. Okay. So, so have you discussed soul ties? I did kind of touch on soul ties. So let's get on that. Wait a minute. Let me go back. Karmic ties i think is somebody asked me about so when we talk about karmic ties that's part of our, our karmic um lessons so you got to think when you're dealing with karmic lessons um there might be somebody that is reciprocating the same energy and it might be a past karmic lesson so sometimes i like i always tell y'all to pull them charts y'all know my favorite word pull them charts so you can see what your karmic dance is so you can see what the karmic lesson is for you to learn what is that that um, particular access in so you could know do you need to heal something from generational ties from generational situations because that energy might be representing in where you're at now but if you are really truly working on even beyond the chart let's say y'all don't never get y'all chart done if you are really really working on who you are 
being connected to your highest self, those things will be obsolete. Because you're going to see them for what they are. You'll experience those experiences differently. When you are not aware or knowledgeable, you say your chart not right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Keys, I came with you today. You got to pull your chart. But anyway, um, when you are fully in your power and in your, in your, your divinity, then... The things that you are focused on is different. The, the clarity that you have when you're moving is different. The way you interact with people is different. Right? Go soak your feet in, in, in some water. <laughs> the things that you are honestly like being even tested with, you experience those tests and those challenges different. And that's the key. You want to you wanna experience it different. You don't want to have to always experience the lessons hard. And, if, and then it's about a perception. How are you perceiving the lessons? Are you perceiving the lessons as they're going to be hard? That every life lessons that you got is, is going to be hard? Because that's how it's going to come across. If you are, are perceiving that the lesson is a beautiful journey, it's a beautiful experience. I perceive every lesson right now as a beautiful experience. And that's what I get in return. When we had a divination, she explained it as our soul made a contract to always find each other. Yeah, now that's different. Soul contracts. I hadn't got on that part. Soul contracts is when, let's say, you transition and the person that you might have been in that previous life with, y'all decided to create a contract that you will find each other during this next cycle. You will find each other when you reincarnate. That's something different. So the thing about soul contracts and then what I've experienced even with doing readings for other people, it depends on what was the reasoning for you to create that soul contract in the past life. And when y'all meet in this life, are you at the place where you are even able to connect? You see what I'm saying? Because you might find each other at a, a, a time frame that is not... I guess, balance or at the right time. Somebody might be married. Might be something else going on. Somebody could be locked up. It could be a whole lot of craziness going on. But that's when they have that, that soul contract is interesting. That means that you got it the last time. That's When you are able to create soul contracts, that means that the time frames that you have recycled, you keep recycling back. You see what I'm saying? You keep recycling back. So you might have had that one particular person that keeps coming into this particular lifespan with you to the point where y'all decide, okay, we're going to do a contract. So we always got to find each other. That, that, that energy within itself is, is something amazing. And they feel more than familiar. They feel like where you've been, like I, I've always... It's like a different type of familiarity. I don't think I made no soul contracts. I do say I feel like, but that's like what I was talking about with my son. That could be not, that's not just love interest. That's also, um, um, it could be your children. Your children can, can do soul contracts with you. No, not conducive. You stupid. You say you married in this life. <laughs> so much you don't like him. You liked him enough to get married to him. I'm just saying. So, soul contracts can be um, somebody. How do you find out about the soul contract? You would know if you have a soul contract. You're always going to be looking for her or that person. There's, there is, and then when you are together, it's going to be almost like it's a kindred spirit. Like you always, it, it's a knowing. I have a young couple that they had a soul contract. And um, when they were together and we were able to do a certain, I don't like to talk about the spiritual stuff on here, but we were able to do a certain experience with them. They remembered that they were together in past lives before. But he cheated on her in her past life. So when she came through 
in, in this particular um, experience. When she came back through, she was mad, super angry at him for cheating on her from previous lifetimes. But they were supposed to do it right this time. But she's decided to just be his friend instead. <laughs> it's an interesting dynamic, but they could remember everything. Never had a soul contract itself for my child. Exactly. Children can be soul contracts. Children can even be like when you have your child, it seems like you have a different type of connection to them. You have a different connection to them. You'll be like, they feel like they've been there before. I told you, I, I'm so serious. I know my son is going to really probably try to do a soul contract with me and make me come back. <laughs> I told him, I was like, let me just leave a little bit of myself in the ethers. And then that way you can, I can be a spirit guide or something. I don't think I got to come back. I got to come back. That'll be the only reason I come back, though. I'm not going to lie. Yes, like there are certain people that you're going to have a different type of connection to. I think my contract is. And you're going to always feel there's going to be a certain type of connection, I'm telling you, with, with people. Um, so we talked about soul ties. Like I said, soul ties, I don't, I don't believe in. I mean, I get it because it's an attachment, but with soul ties, it is the energy of your energy intertwining with others, especially if you have been intimate, specifically if you've been intimate with that person. But you have to know who you are. You cannot, no one can have an attachment to you without you, you allowing that attachment to be there. If you feel like, um, that person is attached to you or they have a soul tie to you, that's because you're allowing that soul tie to be there. You could be intimate with somebody and cut that shit off immediately. You probably were. But see, it's even those dynamics, um, Alicia, you have to decide. It's a choice. It's all about free will. What it is is that that you want to experience this lifetime and what you don't want to experience. I must already be good at not having an attachment because I can't say I've ever felt like that. Exactly. That's why I say some people don't. If you don't believe in it, it don't exist. Please believe it. Like, your reality is yours. You are able to create the reality that you want. So like a spirit, like an astral connection is what you're asking, spiritual connection. That's still similar to like soul connections, beloved, because it's the same thing as our spiritual self. It's part of our spiritual self. It's the lowest level of our spiritual self is actually the etheric part. Souls are, are separate, same energy, right? Souls are separate, no, not same energy. Souls are separate, but, but reflections of our energy. If we're talking about soulmate. Troy. Yes. Similar. Not really. That's not really a soul tower, a soul contract. That's more of like they connected to you because they do remember you from their past. And that can be like a soul contract. Is that what you're asking me, Keys? I'm sorry. So we don't continue to return until we all are elevated. Not all are elevated. You continue to return if you don't know how to not return. That's a whole nother video. I ain't even getting ready to spend another hour on that. <laughs> you continue to return and you re continue to recycle. It's a choice. When you have transitioned, you have to get into a space. Is this a choice? Or, you know, do I want to return? Do I want to leave this in the ether? Do I have all the information that I was supposed to gather and all the lessons that I was supposed to gather in order for me to elevate to the next part? Yes. 
Thank you, Steph. That part. But I don't know if that's what Troy was asking. Right. The, or do we have the information that we need in order for us to go to the, that next level? Can we can we elevate? If we're not in the space where we can now be an ascended master, is what I like to call them, an ascended master, then we need to recycle back so we can learn the other lessons. We can gather more information. We can experience the next journey. So basically, I know. Right. Now that's because that's more of a karmic dynamic. Paying attention, have you healed your part so you can heal the, the karmic dynamic? I'm trying to end up on Saturn next. I don't want to come back. You don't want to come back. Ascending Master. I got a whole nother concept when you talk about Saturn and. Oh, yeah, that's a whole nother video, y'all. Because that, that, that's, to me, especially with what's going on in the way that our universe is um, unfolding at this moment in time and shifting, that's a whole nother conversation. Yes, I don't want this to be the last one. Yeah, we want it to be, hopefully, willfully. Maybe not. Maybe it's something that you're going to get to that moment and be like, uh... I might got to come back one more time. You stupid pride. Not Popeye's chicken. I'm going to need Popeye's chicken not to be your twin flame. <laughs> what about remote viewing? Yes, consciousness. That's dealing with another level of consciousness. Yes, is that, that uh, uh, possible? Absolutely. What's a twin flame? Where was you at? You have to go look at the other video. We ain't going over what twin flames are. Twin flames is like the, the reflection of who you are at that moment in time. So you're going to experience many twin flames. They are going to make you be your best self. They're going to bring out your best self. They're going to make you want to be better. You know about your past life. Through astral travel, through memories, through flashes, through meditation, it depends on what your particular gift and your connection would be, beloved, um, as far as learning about your past life. You can sometimes see it through our charts and what gifts we bring in, but a lot of times it's the remembering of who we are. Yes, you got to, and that's a, that's a whole nother, I would love to see your chart keys. Send me your information. I want to see your chart. What you what you talking about, Steph? I'm sorry. I done missed it. I went past life reading one time. It was amazing. Yes. I always say, like, some people can give you what your past life reading. I've heard a lot of different dynamics. And we live so many past lives. We've been all, we cycle back so many times and not just in the perspective that we think in. I'm like, shoot, that great, great aunt might've recycled through you. You might be an extension of who she is. I know my, my great, great grandmother, great, 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 great. I think three greats. She was a seamstress and I definitely know her energy recycled back through me. Definitely. But the whole thing is knowing, knowing okay, got you, yeah, exactly. I was like, what what's ten and what's eleven? <laughs> like I said that the twin flame is gonna be a reflection of who you are. 
that soulmate is just you gonna meet plenty of soulmates and they don't never twin flames and soulmates don't necessarily like again once I, i'm telling y'all they don't necessarily have to be somebody from an intimate perspective they might actually be somebody who um represent the reflection of who we are yes <laughs> yeah i was checking on you They help you find a completion within yourself. Does the chart help you with dealing with this current president? Ha! No, ain't shit helping we all deal. You know, mm, that's a whole nother. I ain't even gonna get into that. I don't even want to go there with y'all. Y'all gotta understand, don't even get caught up emotionally with what's going on politically wise. Decode it. The best way to deal with things is to decode everything. Peace. Exactly. Where twin flames can be. They love hate relationship and can be very painful. I see there's so much mixed reviews. I don't see twin flames as being a love hate. I do see soulmates as being love hate relationships though. If a twin flame has you have a love hate relationship, it's because you still got some hate towards yourself. Oh yeah. I'm sitting on my feet and I shouldn't have been. Okay. That's how I see that. <laughs> my phone trying to do like a million things. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to read y'all comments. Yeah, the political thing is something different. People be getting, catching feelings over shit that don't really have nothing to do with us. I mean, it do, but not from the level that you think it do. So you got to understand the, the whole political stuff, books that we read, you know, no matter what side of the fence, if you Christian or you not Christian and you reading the Bible, it's understanding how, what the Bible actually represents. What decode it, learning how to decode it and read all the books, not just one. Understand what everything means. Understand the, the the root of the word. Understand how to break down language, especially when we're dealing with this English language. Understand how to break down language, words or spells, times 10, especially in this country. So you got to understand how to break everything down to the simplest form. What they really mean. What are they representing? What is this, this particular passage here to tell us? What is Trump being in the White House? What does that mean? That's a whole nother conversation. So we ain't even going to get distracted. They are distractions. Especially if you don't know how to decode it. Y'all got to learn how to decode stuff. You should be decoding like in your sleep. <laughs> what is it when you feel like someone is getting back for something? Or scared of you? Hmm. What is it when you feel like someone is getting back for something? Somebody is being revenge, revengeful, or vengeful. Is that what you're asking, beloved Chelsea? Recognizing what the distractions are is a powerful in itself. Yes, recognizing what is distractions. Hook on phonics, yes. Hooked on phonics, they're gone. Taking words and really taking the time to break it down. Just know that I'm being an officer in purpose that was already in place before we... Oh, him being in office. Yeah, absolutely. He definitely serves a purpose. And, and sometimes you can't get caught up in the hype of he's a bad president. Don't get it caught up in the hype. Understand what his purpose is. Understand what he's about to issue in. And what, he, what his dynamic. Break down his name. That's the biggest part. Break down his name. Break down his father's name. You see what I'm saying? Break down the certain dynamic that he represents. 
and what is getting ready to unfold because of what he represents. Y'all getting on, like people was jumping on the fact that Kanye was in a certain dynamic. Kanye was in the damn White House working magic. <laughs> Him and Kim be on some other day on something else. Y'all sleeping. Pay attention to what people... Pay attention to everything. The code, everything. Understand what it means. But before y'all even jump into that, before you even jump into that, don't worry about that shit. Worry about you. Worry about what do I mean? What am I standing for? What is my true power? Let me walk in my divinity so I can understand what I, I can manifest. Yes, yeah, Kim and her whole family, trust me. Understand even the agenda of why they are promoting biracial relationships right now. And everything. Pay attention. That's a whole... I ain't even getting into them. No. Break down his name and what it means. His real name. His real name is Donald. Break down his real name. What? A, and then go down and see... Why is he the son of who he is? What does his name mean? Understand what does he mean? He represents the joker. The trickster. He's the trickster energy. So he's going to give you truth and he's going to give you the lie. Not even a lie. He gives you truth and, and, and shows you twisted it. Twist the dynamic. But anyway. Uh, birthday, birth time, and birth place keys yes preserving the bloodlines look at y'all look at I say yes what's a US president to a guy you better tell it pay attention people be hating on uh them too <laughs> yes he represents the gatekeeper what he trying to build Break it down. Break it down. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I say you're welcome. All right, y'all. I'm about to get off of here. Oh, revengeful. Okay, beloved. Finally, we got you. When somebody is being vengeful, allow them to be. Operate in your gift. Don't worry about what they're doing. It comes back to them. If you feel like that they are serving that type of energy, they don't need to be around you. If you feel like they are representing a certain dynamic, they don't need to be around you. If you feel like it's a potential, they don't need to be around you. And if they are operating from a vengeful space, that means they haven't healed from what has happened. exactly i understand why what is it that he's he's trying to do that's why i always be like yeah it's a lot of craziness that pop up off of his mouth and it's a lot of shit that he do that i just be shaking my head because he made my eye hurt but pay attention to what it is he's doing Mario, how you come in at the end and you talk about you need prayer? We love you, beloved. Why is he wanting to build a wall? This is a whole nother conversation. Y'all be getting me off track. But I think we, we finished what we're going to say on Twin Flames. Because <laughs> you came in talking about, Lord, mercy, I need prayer today. Mari, we love you. We love you. We're sending love to Mari. We sending her love and light. We surrounding you with the love and light of Yemiya. She is there to protect you and guide you through this process. Okay, how you handle a vengeful family member to protect yourself? Chaos is the yes to pray. Thank you. It is. And there is definitely going to be extreme balance that's happening. Yes. Yes, I'm going to save this live. I saved the first one. Thank goodness. Y'all know I hate 
doing not doing that um yeah with the the vengeful energy um you got to be very mindful because people they operate from pain they operate from their own chaos they operate from their own emotion so you have to make sure that you are operating in your highest self and not operating from that emotion operate from your god self don't entertain the, the other emotions let them be in that space by themselves with themselves don't engage that's my biggest thing don't engage I'm not engaging in this that's a distraction you distracted me from my godlike energy i ain't got time for that let, exactly let it go let them sit where they want to sit what you say oh no don't save this lie don't save it <laughs> We saving it and we gonna repost it. Do you go live every day? No, I don't. I'm sorry. This is a rare event. I probably won't be live for a while, y'all. I gotta get in these books. I've been BSing a little bit. Oh, I've been like, oh, Shay. We love you too. All right, y'all. I'm about to get off of here. The biggest thing that I want, I, I had several people that were having a hard time. And, you know, we just came out of a lot of transitional energy that was pushing us to let go of things that were not serving us. All last year, we were pushing, it was pushing us to let go of things that are not serving us. You see what I'm saying? So now that we are in these last month of resolution, and resolving the things that are not serving us. Yep, Steph is. She got my back. She part of the guards. <laughs> um, we have to be in a space where we're like doing the things, like I said, that are focused on our self mastery. So, so do the things that are, are focused on your self mastery. Okay, do the things that are focused on your self mastery, and you can let go of that energy you can let it go these things are here to serve you it's all about your perception how are you perceiving it if you perceive it to be a growth element if you perceive it to be something that is going to push you to your highest self instead of perceiving it to be something negative and focusing all your attention on this negative energy that you're feeling the draining energy the fact that you miss them why you miss somebody who wasn't good to you you see what I'm saying? It's almost like, um, oh, where pride at? I know you good with the wordplay. Um, what is my word that I'm looking for? It's a disorder. So it's like you have gotten cognitive disorder, cognitive something. Anyway, you have gotten into a space where now you have gotten addicted to that dysfunction. It is really simple. That person obviously was not serving who you were from the highest form. So now it is, why are you missing them? You're missing them for what? You're missing them not talking to you the right way? you missing them from not showing you the right amount of love? No, that ain't the word I'm looking for either. It's cognitive. It's something cognitive. I'm going to look it up. Stockholm Syndrome. Thank you. Ashe, who was that? Sandy. Yes. Yes, Sandy. And yes, that one too, Pride. I knew it was it's both of them. <laughs> but Pink Petal. That's it. Okay, so think of it from that perspective. When you have been in a space where that person is consistently showing you nasty behavior, been showing you stuff, and now you're dependent or you you feeling attached to that that no why every time you get in a space where you miss that person you should like automatically click in the, why am i missing that person because that means that you love them more than you love yourself that means you love their behavior more than you love yourself how are we going to love that behavior how are we going to love something that is not serving us that is not speaking life into us that is not helping us grow that is not showing love that's not being a reflection of who we are how we love that more than we love ourselves. 
That don't even make sense. So when you get that feeling that someone, peace, that you get that feeling of, of, of hey, I'm missing, I'm in my feeling, I'm in my emotions, click out of your emotions. Click out of the emotions. So when you click out of the emotion, peace, peace, when you click out of the emotions, you can understand, like, let me look at it from the factual aspect. Let me not romanticize this. Let me not romanticize this. Let me really look at facts. Facts is that person was treating you like shit. And now you want to sit here and be crying over it. Why? Do you not feel like you deserve better? Do you not feel like you deserve more? Do you not feel like you worthy of more? Right. <laughs> Say that again, Steph, for the people in the back. You deserve way more. You deserve way more. So because we deserve way more, we should not be crying. We should not be crying. You see what I'm saying? We should not. So next time you send in your feelings, you trying to figure out this person, your soulmate, your twin flame, whatever the case may be, remember who you are. Remember who you are. Have constant reminders. Mama, you need to remember, remind her who she is. Remind her of her queenliness. Remind her of her, her godliness. Thank them for the lesson. Yes, think about the positive. I always say, sometimes we ain't at that space yet. <laughs> sometimes we got to remember like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be thankful for the fact that you moving out the way for my real co-creator to come in. <laughs> you should never yes reprogram yourself beloved you should never feel guilty about wanting more you deserve every bit of it and some we deserve more than what's even on our radar you deserve more than what's on your radar you got limited perspective you deserve more than what's on there I woke up and gave them. I, I, I say you better get them your notice. <laughs> your head is. It's all about how you receiving it. How how can you get in the mindset where you say, "Hey, now is the point where I'm I'm focused on me. I'm focused on my growth. I'm focused on what's best for me. Every choice and every decision needs to be what's best for me." Every choice and every decision needs to be the same way I love and care for my children is the same way I should love and care for myself. The same way I love and care for my mother, for some of us, it should be the same way that I love and care for myself. It really is that simple. Stop making it complicated, y'all. Write it down on a piece of paper if you need to. Yes, guilt is ego. Release that. But write it down on a piece of paper. So you can see it. That way you can see how stupid it sounds. Like, when you write down, like, this person was doing this, they cons. And write down what your pros is, but them not being in your life no more. <laughs> and you focus on that. Focus on your pros. Focus on the fact that you ain't got to go to bed frustrated. You ain't got to go to bed with your throat hurting because you ain't get to say what you wanted to really say. <laughs> they challenging your throat chakra. No, asking for more means that you know what you worth. Asking for more means that you understand your value. You understand what you are truly worth. You understand your divinity. You ain't doing something, Mari. You ain't writing it down. You ain't believing it. You don't even believe your own worth. And you way more powerful than that. 
try to make you feel guilty. Don't, yep. You know, I don't do guilt trips. I let people say what they're going to say and I don't even respond. That's where you at. Because that's when I realized we ain't speaking in the same language. We ain't speaking in the same language. Oh. It's going to be a complicated. I ain't even to have this conversation with you. We ain't on the same level. What's getting back from what? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. We love you, Mari. We know that you're more powerful than you're allowing yourself to be. Sometimes we're scared to show up in our own power. Sometimes we're scared to show up in our own true power. We're scared of what it looks like. We're scared of the unknown. We're scared of what we can unfold and what we can manifest. Show up for yourself. Showing your own power. Showing your true, your true divinity. When you start showing up for yourself and being committed for your to yourself, y'all out here trying to be committed to people and you ain't even committed to your own damn self. You ain't even master who you are. Be committed to your own self. Be committed to your own growth. Be committed to what it is that you are able to manifest. Work on that first. Then let everybody come in. Let the people come in. Now the gates is open. They ain't really open. You still got guards at the gate. They open. Yes. Mari already know. Mari, y'all, Mari is like a she she's a super healer. She just ain't ready to walk in her power yet. For herself. She's committed to everyone except for herself. But it's time to be committed to you, beloved. It's time to be committed to you first. Ashe. Oh, Ashe. I have a lot of wisdom because I don't live an uh, interesting life, y'all. That's why I opened it up saying I have... I cannot have any regrets. I've lived a beautiful life. I've lived a wonderful journey. I've done a lot of things. I have beautiful children to show for every experience. I have a whole lot of memories to show for every experience. A whole lot. So that's what built me into where I'm at and where I'm going. That's what has given me the understanding that I needed to have. Anyway, I'm gone so I can go study before I be flunking out of school messing with y'all. Um, yes, can't pour from an empty cup. Fill yourself up first. Mari, get what you need to do for yourself first. Everyone, honestly. This is self-mastery year, self-healing year. This is the time for us to really work on ourself. Work on mastering yourself. Work on mastering yourself. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Work on mastering yourself. Work on the self-love for yourself. That way, what we are pulling into our circle, into our, our environment, is what? What exactly we deserve and more. All right? Yes, I'll get back with you on your chart keys. It'll probably be a day or so. I love every part, the good and the bad of my lessons. Anyway, I love y'all. I will talk to y'all another day. It'll probably be closer to the end of the week unless I pop up with something that I learned that I want to share. All right. I love y'all. I love you, Mari. I love you, Mari. I love you, Mari. <laughs> I'm sending you so much love and light right now. I love you. I'll shake.